Back in the 90s and early 2000s, the hip hop scene was dominated by two major record labels, Death Row Records and Murder Inc. Death Row paved the way for icons like Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Tupac Shakur. On the other hand, Murder Inc. nurtured up and coming talents like Ja Rule and Ashanti. Your lips, your smile, but everything shifted when Tupac was tragically killed in a drive-by shooting around 1996, leaving the industry craving a new star. Enter Ja Rule, a rapper hailing from Queens, New York, who became the face of Murder, Inc. His music blended R&B and rap, and he quickly rose to fame with catchy tunes like Holla Holla and Put It On Me. Holla, holla. Even Death Row Records CEO Suge Knight took notice, seeing similarities between Ja Rule and Tupac. In this video, we will dive into Ja Rule's rise to fame and his connections with two of hip hop's most controversial figures, Tupac and Suge Knight. We'll investigate how Ja Rule's quest to be like Tupac brought him both admiration and criticism, including from fellow rappers like 50 Cent. Plus, we'll dig into the clash between Murder Inc. and Death Row, featuring the notorious meeting between Chris Gotti and Shaq Knight at New York City's St. Regis Hotel. Let's dig in. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. The connection between Ja Rule and Suge Knight began when Ja and his label head Irv Gotti of Murder Inc. wanted to use a sample of one of Tupac's iconic songs for Ja's own music. They got in touch with Suge Knight and Suge quickly gave his approval for the Tupac sample and also developed a bond with Irv Gotti. Suge was so impressed with Ja Rule that he even wanted to sign him to Death Row Records. He noticed many similarities between Ja Rule and Tupac from their music to their style. According to Irv, when he first met Suge, they instantly clicked and became close friends. Even though Suge had a bad reputation in the industry, Suge always treated Irv with respect. When they were around each other, they always spoke about their passion for hip hop and the artists they admired. During one recording session, after hearing Ja Rule perform in the studio, Suge Knight got emotional. This is what Irv had to say on the matter. I remember Ja Rule doing something and Suge had tears in his eyes. He was like, yo, this is the new Tupac. It was a really touching moment. Ja Rule also said something similar about his encounter with Suge Knight. He asked me a question and when I answered he was like, yo, that's exactly what Pac said. He got real emotional. He had, I guess, similar energy to him because he asked me a question and when I answered he said, yo, that's exactly what Pac said. However, not everyone was a fan of this connection. Ja Rule was often criticized by the public for trying to be like Pac. And to add fuel to the fire, 50 Cent, an up and coming rapper, also criticized Ja Rule for being a Tupac copycat. Everybody wants to make comparisons to Pac and X and me. Y'all just want to see Pac come back? Y'all want to see this? Shit? It's here, man. It's here. It's here. Around 2003, to the delight of rap fans, Eminem, 50 Cent, and Busta Rhymes teamed up for a diss track aimed at Ja Rule called Hell Mary 2003. They took the 1997 Tupac classic Hail Mary, remixed it, and added some fiery lyrics directed at their rival, Ja Rule. This epic clapback was inspired by Ja Rule reworking Tupac's pain into so much pain for his album Pain Is Love. The trio did not hold back, poking fun at Ja for trying to copy Pac's style and making it known that Ja Rule could never fill Tupac's shoes. Not one to take things lying down, Ja Rule fired back with his own diss track, Loose Change, taking M and 50 Cent and Eminem. One line that really stung was, M, you claim your mother's a crackhead and Kim is a known so what's Haley gonna be when she grows up? This jab at Eminem's 8 year old daughter Haley led to an all out response from Eminem, Obi Trice and almost every D12 member in Do Re Mi, Haley's Revenge. 
I'm about to get rid of some hoes. It's simple. I put the murder ink with lead and I ain't talking about a pencil. The beef between Eminem, Ja Rule, and 50 Cent became one of the most talked about rap battles of the early 2000s. The media could not get enough of all these diss tracks. But interestingly, despite the controversy surrounding Ja Rule's imitation of Pac, his friendship with Suge Knight stayed strong. Suge had a lot of respect for Ja and so a lot of great potential in the rapper. However, every friendship has its fair share of challenges. As mentioned earlier, Murder Inc. and Death Row were always on good terms, but they eventually clashed when Suge Knight tried to steal Ja Rule from Murder Inc. According to Gotti, Suge was a predator, and all predators make one move to see how far they can get away with something. Gotti explained that Suge saw Ja Rule's talent and tried to recruit him. However, Murder Inc. stood their ground and Suge eventually backed off. Irv Gotti recalled the moment when Kevin Lyles, then president of Def Jam, called him into his office and told him that Suge was trying to sign Ja Rule. This tension led to a confrontation between Chris Gotti, 10 of Gotti's associates, and Suge Knight at the St. Regis Hotel in New York. Chris Gotti, backed by his crew, went to confront Suge Knight about his intention to sign Ja Rule. Gotti showed up at the hotel with 30 or 40 of his associates, keeping most of them outside while he and around 10 others stepped inside the hotel. Gotti said that he and the hotel staff were so intimidated by his presence that they easily gave up Suge Knight's room number. The hotel staff were like, I don't get paid enough for this. Once they reached Suge Knight's room, he was only with one other person. Chris Gotti then confronted Suge Knight about his intention to sign Ja Rule, ultimately resolving the issue. According to Chris, Suge Knight was not afraid at all and handled the confrontation like a man. This whole incident happened when Ja Rule was working on his next album, Blood In My Eye, which came out around 2003. The album featured diss tracks aimed at 50 Cent and G-Unit, who were locked in a highly publicized beef with Ja Rule and Murder Inc. at the time. Seeing as Murder Inc. had its hands full with 50 Cent and Eminem, Suge might have seen this as a golden opportunity to snatch Ja Rule from his label. While the encounter at St. Regis Hotel was certainly intense, it ended on a peaceful note. Both sides walked away with a newfound respect for each other, and though they did not become business partners, they didn't become enemies either. Mm -hmm. And I went and knocked on the door, he came to the door, we started talking, and you know, he understood that um, basically Murder Inc., this is how we feed our family. Shit was in the room with one person. We made sure he came out and sat down. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you a very nice... Yeah, 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 the clean, clean PG yeah, version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then, but it's real, thousand percent real. And then I had a real talk with, with the big homie. Mm -hmm. After the showdown at the hotel, it seemed like the dust between Murder Inc. and Death Row Records had finally settled. In fact, Irv Gotti and Suge Knight even had plans to work on a business venture together. The pair cooked up a surprising idea to establish a musician's union. Despite their flashy and controversial reputations, the duo was committed to addressing the lack of representation and benefits for artists in the music industry. This union would have been similar to the Major League Baseball Players Association, offering health insurance, pensions, and labor standards for musicians across all genres. Membership fees would come from album budgets, and the idea was to ask record labels to bump up budgets by a small percentage to cover expenses. According to Chris Gotti, this was mainly Suge Knight's idea. And even though Suge Knight was seen as a boogeyman of hip hop, he wanted to make up for his past mistakes and make sure each artist got their fair share of revenue. Now even though Suge Knight and Murder Inc. were trying to fight for the artist, their ideas came to a halt when the FBI raided Murder Inc.'s offices and arrested Irv Gotti and his brother Chris Gotti. The Murder Inc. case would be a benchmark for federal law enforcement trial of money laundering, murder, extortion, and hip-hop music. Now this story has been covered a thousand times, so I won't get into the details, but for those of you who don't know, Murder Inc. was accused of laundering money and was said to have connections to the notorious drug lord Kenneth Supreme McGriff. In conclusion, the ties between Ja Rule, Irv Gotti, and Suge Knight are a tangled web. 
With the ascent of Modi Inc. and the decline of death row records, Ja Rule sees the spotlight. I know a lot of people hate on Ja Rule today, especially after 50 Cent destroyed his career. However, back in the day, Ja Rule was quite respected in the hip hop community. At the time, people thought that Ja Rule was trying to sound like DMX and also thought he was trying to sound like Pac. However, after Ja Rule decided to fuse R&B and rap, he found his sound. However, this eventually led to his downfall as many people thought his singing rap style was quite soft. Despite all the comparisons, Shugnat was impressed with Ja Rule's talent and saw many similarities between him and Tupac. The St. Regis Hotel showdown in New York City between Chris Gotti and Suge Knight was a pivotal moment in their relationship. It displayed the fortitude and solidarity of Murder Inc. and showed how far they were willing to go to defend their artist from being poached. At the end of the day, Ja Rule stayed with Murder Inc., dropping multiple hit albums while Suge Knight continued his legacy as being known as the boogeyman of hip hop. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened between Irv, Chris, Suge Knight, and Ja Rule, in your opinion? Let me know down below. Also, add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time. Peace.